We're watching Press TV's news review where we look deeper into some of the top stories of the day. On this segment of the program, uh, the NATO Secretary General is in Ukraine on his first visit since the beginning of Russia's military offensive there. Jens Stoltenberg arrived in the capital, Kiev, in the early hours of Thursday. He paid respect to Ukrainian soldiers killed in the conflict and inspected some damaged Russian military equipment. The Western Military Alliance has already given its full backing to Kiev since the war broke in February last year. The U.S. said NATO has provided Ukraine with weapons worth billions of dollars and is due to make uh, more such deliveries. Russia has repeatedly criticized NATO's military support for Kiev, saying that the bloc is only fanning the flames of war. Joining us on this edition of the News Review, we have uh, Christoph Forstel, author and politician, joining us from Berlin. Also, we have Dmitry Zolotarev, journalist, joining us from Irkutsk, Russia. Gentlemen, welcome to the program. Let's start off with Mr. Horstel in Berlin. Uh, give us your perspective and thoughts on uh, the recent visit by the NATO Secretary, Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg, and if you think there's any significance to the timing of this. Yes, of course, there is significance to the timing. This is the first time uh, Mr. Stoltenberg, NATO Secretary General, has visited Ukraine in the whole war. That's important, so to say. Uh, Kiev has cried out for speedy membership within NATO. NATO so far says it is not ready, but uh, and they are ready only after the fighting. Uh, so I'm quite sure there will be objections within NATO, strong objections for Ukraine membership because that would mean immediate uh, in your case of defense and that means immediate spread of the war all over Europe maybe to the US so this is the the outer sign but the inner sign is also that uh, NATO is not able to keep up the level of support uh, for another year or so because it's simply too costly Corruption is rampant in uh, the Ukraine, and the U.S. are, in fact, uh, getting crazy with it. Uh, if we uh, remember Seymour Hirsch writing about it, that the CIA is deeply in distrust with the Biden administration uh, about handling many issues, uh, one of them being the rampant uh, corruption in Ukraine. Lots of billions of money disappearing, weapons disappearing at grand scale, some of them showing up in Syria. So this, these are the problems. The West gets tired of Ukraine and the visit of Stoltenberg wants to repair some of the damage because, of course, they are afraid that Ukraine is dropping out of the war. Mr. Zolotarev, your thoughts uh, on uh, the issue as well. How do you view the recent uh, visit by uh, Jens Stoltenberg to Ukraine? Well, we don't know anything official, so we have our suspicions, though. I think uh, Stoltenberg is not there to discuss even uh, within a couple of words Ukraine's uh, joining NATO. It's out of the question, like my colleague said, because you cannot join NATO while ongoing conflict. So uh, I think uh, Stoltenberg there is uh, whether to talk Zelensky into uh, peace, peace talks, which I seriously doubt because uh, uh, Russia does have its vote in this game. So uh, I think uh, Ukraine cannot meet Russian, Russia's conditions uh, in peace talks. So, in this case, I think Stoltenberg there is, is for talk Zelensky into standing the ground because now the United States uh, oppressed Seoul, the South Korea. The pressure is uh, very heavy, so the Koreans uh, could supply Ukraine with ammunition and uh, possibly with uh, other equipment. And there is a talk, ifs and buts, if Russia this, if Russia that, but if you want to do something, you will have, you will find a pretext. So I think uh, Stoltenberg is uh, there for just chit chat and talk Zelensky into stand some ground because uh, waging war in Ukraine is very profitable. It's a good business. And Washington understands that no one gives a damn that Europe is tired with Ukraine, that the uh, United States 
well, somewhat not tied with Ukraine because they would have stopped it just like this. They didn't. It's a very good business. So everybody knows that uh, Ukraine's president is scheming and uh, no one does anything. They are endorsing him. So, which makes it absolutely clear they are not going to stop the war now and uh, they are not up to peace talks. They are just uh, to make something clear to, well, to continue this. And uh, no one gives a real damn that uh, Ukraine skimmed over $400 million. Well, what's new in that? What's, why? what's some more? They are concerned only about it popped up. And the information just, uh, well, was leaked. This is what they are concerned about, not about stopping uh, the war or spending even more money, because they don't sp spend any money. You, United States taxpayers do. And uh, their reaction is only concern of those guys. So that's my opinion. Mr. Horstel, uh, about uh, the issue of uh, Russia repeatedly criticizing NATO's military support for Kiev, they say that the bloc is fanning the flames of war. As Mr. Zolotov just mentioned, uh, the United States is also now pressuring South Korea to maybe uh, chime in and uh, give some assistance to Ukraine. There's always the threat here that this war could spill over into other regions and maybe morph into something bigger. Do you agree with that? Yes, certainly I agree with that. I have said that from the start that this uh, may turn out to be a real, true world war. And in fact, worldwide, the, how to say, the haggle and struggle is already going on. We see this in Korea. And in fact, the uh, utterances from the South Korean president is not really calming me uh, because I think, same as my Russian colleague, that uh, South Korea may take any pretext, any time, uh, and at any rate of delivery of uh, ammunition or even maybe arms. So it is Washington who, in the, which decides over the South Korean fate as much as over the German and at large also over the European fate. And the signs in Washington are unfortunately criminal. The governing deep state is pressuring the Biden administration into crazy stories. And that's continuing here, and it gives a new development if the NATO Secretary General Stoltenberg visits uh, Ukraine for the first time since the war has officially started from the NATO side, so to say, because the real war, as we know, has started 2014. And killing of Donbas people has started at that time already. So Washington has started the whole story and is now sending the Secretary General to give more, how to say, uh, pleasure and, and uh, higher level of uh, discussion for the Ukrainian leadership. But of course, as my Russian colleague says, the U.S. wants to sell weapons and wants to fight in Ukraine until the last Ukrainian. All right, thanks a lot, gentlemen. That's all the time we have for this segment of the program. Christoph uh, Horstel, author and politician, joining us from Berlin, and thanks to Mr. Dmitry Zolotarev, uh, journalist joining us from Irkutsk, Russia. With that, it brings us to an end here on this edition of the News Review, but stick around, there's plenty more to come here on Press TV.